I'm astrologer and life coach Penny Dix. Welcome to my YouTube channel and welcome to my in-depth look at the new moon coming up very soon. In fact, on the 12th of December, the new moon in Sagittarius. So what I'm going to do is go through briefly the main transits around this new moon and how we feel or how we can see it's going to affect us leading up to the full moon, which is just after Christmas. And then I will go through your individual zodiac signs and just let you know which part of your chart you can expect this energy to be in. Now, there is some quite interesting energy and we need to be mindful of the fact that this new moon is the day before Mercury, our planet of communication, goes retrograde. And how will this affect the new moon? Because it's a new moon. It's about new things, new blessings, new intents. And Mercury slams on the brakes and goes, no, you don't. Let's slow down. Let's just look at what really needs to be attended to, to what really matters. Because I was thinking about Sagittarius as a sign and I was thinking, you know, it's ruled by my big outer boy, Jupiter our planet of expansion, of opportunity, of luck. It really is almost that, that, that sort of planet where we can make a wish when it turns up, when it shows up. But, you know, with Mercury going retrograde, maybe it's actually saying to us, be careful what you wish for. Have you ever had that, where you've wanted something so badly and you get it and then it just brings a whole host of problems and that if you're able to actually stand back at that point and look at the bigger picture maybe this is why it was so hard to manifest this particular wish because it wasn't really actually going to be what was good for you. It's reminding me of genies and lamps and how they ask us to think very carefully when they pop out of that, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the lamp and you rub it three times and out pops the genie and says, your wish is my command. Well, you know, sometimes what we've wanted and don't get turns into a blessing. So I just want to throw that in because this is an emotive time of year. Be careful what you are wishing for or what you're trying to manifest. Make sure it's in alignment with actually what the divine is trying to lead you towards. You know, the energy at this time of year anyway, let alone with the kind of astrology we've been dealing with, the energy alone is, is like we're all on some kind of mad race to be ready for the 24th of December, let alone the 25th and the 31st. But if you think about it, we're all madly rushing round for these limited edition special days. And how much, you know, not even looking at or thinking about the spiritual or religious side of what Christmas is about for Christianity, um, you know, not to, to not honour and respect all other faiths 
I'm talking about the real Father Christmassy kind of energy. I know a lot is often said about the meaning and the spiritual kind of, you know, essence of what Christmas is about. But here we have a new moon in Sagittarius, ruled by Jupiter. Now, Jupiter in this sign, sorry, in this chart, is trining Mercury. Now, at this point, the wonderful Techie Jerry is going to make our chart magically appear just like the genie in the bottle. And there we go. We have the wonderful chart above my left shoulder. Might look like the right to you, but it's the left for me. Anyway, as I was saying, Jupiter at the time of the new moon is making a trine aspect, which is apparently helpful to Mercury, the planet of communication, who is already in shadow from his retrograde motion that starts the day after the new moon. Jupiter trining Mercury retrograde. You see, I think Jupiter is saying, you may be full of lots of inspirational ideas of what you would like to manifest for the new year, for 2024. But I think Mercury going retrograde, in spite of it being a trine, and I'll come to that in a minute, Mercury going retrograde is saying, whoa, 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 slow down. It's all about timing. Now, Saturn, our planet of timing, isn't particularly playing a, a role in this particular chart. It's Trining Vesta. Vesta is about kind of growth and harvesting. So there is a perhaps a clue there. Mercury is saying slow down. That literally, maybe you've all been running around chasing your tails, trying to get things done, trying to manifest, trying to set your intention list, writing your lists for 2024. I want, I want, I want. What about what you need? What about what is going to be most helpful to you? You know, I say this as much as I do to you as I do to myself, because, you know, I, I, as you know, I'm dealing with some, some health issues, which if you sign up to my newsletter, I will give you a little heads up about. Um, for that, you have to go to my website, pennydix.com, and then you just submit the form with your website, and it will all somehow be added to our email list, and then you will get my newsletter when I've written it, which I am going to do very, very soon. I'm getting through mountains of emails. I've done mountains of emails this morning before Mercury goes retrograde for me next week. So um, I think after the 13th, one just has to go, whoa, let's just uh, put the brakes on and slow down and relax. So I just want to come back to this fact that Mercury is trining Jupiter. It's actually asking you, the retrograde is asking you to take it easy, to give the important things in your life time to take root. We don't have to do it all by the 24th, the 25th, the 26th, even by the 10th of January. We don't have to have done it all. We just have to make sure that we stay in the moment, stay in 
a good centered part of ourselves. Stay in our heart center. Stay in our heart chakra. Remember, as I've said before, the sun is the beating heart of our solar system. Um, yesterday or the day before, a client sent me an article about the most incredible solar storm that has erupted on our sun. So it's been sending out a lot of energy, radiation to planet Earth. And it's ripped, the solar storm has ripped a kind of a piece of the sun into a massive hole. Don't worry, it will heal. It will heal. But, you know, the symbolism of that, I think, is also incredibly important. Because this solar energy may interfere, for instance, with the internet. So we may find that we can't connect or do what we want to do instantly, like we're used to. You remember a few weeks ago when I had all that trouble getting online with my lives. Well, rightly or wrongly, whether I did them or not, I did them and they uploaded eventually. But it probably was a signal from the sun, from the beating heart of our solar system, not today, not this weekend. Take time out, rest. So let me just also move on to Neptune because Neptune is now direct in Pisces, my oceans of emotions. How are you doing, Pisces? Oh, I've been talking to some of my friends who are Pisces. Please, Pisces, slow down. You will just... You, you, you're, you're exhausting yourselves. Slow down. Anyway, back to Neptune. Neptune is squaring this new moon. This new moon in Sagittarius, Neptune is squaring it. This means there's going to be a lot of sense of confusion, illusion, delusion around what we want to manifest or use with this new moon energy. Maybe that Neptune square is actually helpful because perhaps what it's saying is like the Mercury retrograde, not now, not now. Why not just use this energy of this new moon for short-term fun, happiness, enjoyment, Learning. Remember, Sagittarius rules the ninth house, the ninth house of higher education, spiritual enlightenment. Pluto is going to move into Aquarius next year. We are all going to be experiencing um, the kind of spiritual enlightenment none of us thought we would ever experience. Some of you already are. So I think this new moon is actually also a healing moon. This would be the best use of this new moon energy. Think of Jupiter and its expansive properties. Jupiter rules Sagittarius. The new moon is trined by Chiron in Aries. And Chiron, our wounded healer, as we glibly call him, Chiron is much more than that. Chiron is this space object, part of the centaur group of space objects. Chiron is about those inner wounds that we carry. Wouldn't the use of this, this new moon be better used 
and inviting in healing for yourselves, whether that's psychological healing or physical healing, spiritual healing. And of course, healing for others. Maybe if you want to do a new moon ritual, and I will do a live new moon on uh, the 12th of December, the day before Mercury goes retrograde. And maybe we should just do a little healing meditation and just send out those healing vibes to those that need it to the areas of the planet that are not going to have a very happy Christmas because of war, volcanic eruptions, earthquakes. I mean, the sun itself has basically had an earthquake or a sunquake, perhaps we have to call it, for its solar storm. And maybe we just have to send healing and healing to the planet. But maybe we actually have to do what the ancients did. Because maybe they sent healing to the sun. Now there's a thought. Maybe we have to send healing to the sun. Because the sun is conjunct the moon in this new moon configuration, of course. They are widely conjunct Mars, our planet of action, energy, assertion. But let's use the energy of Mars, the fire of Mars, to heal ourselves, each other, the planet, the solar system, the sun, and if our energies can stand it, we can let that radiate out to the rest of the cosmos. So I guess you can see the chart. Do you want, uh, maybe I'll leave it there a little bit longer. Um, maybe I'll just, I'll just have a quick look at the chart because um, as you can see, the chart is mutable. You know, Sagittarius is a mutable sign. And the four quadrants, if you look at them, Virgo is the ascendant. This is about attention to detail. I use tropical Placidus and I use London, England, Greenwich Mean Time as my um, kind of universal clock. And Gemini is on the midheaven. Sometimes healing requires talking discussion to help healing. Pisces, another mutable sign, my oceans of emotions, is on the descendant, relationships. Saturn in the sixth house, put some boundaries down on those relationships. Don't let the emotions spill out everywhere. Take time out. And Pluto, 28 degrees of Capricorn, is uh, sextiling um, the kind of beginning of Aries, the, the anoretic degree of Aries. So it's almost like it's sending out a signal to the zero, zero degree of Aries. We have to start afresh. New beginnings come with new mindsets. How are you able to shift your mindset away from mundane, personal difficulties not to say you have to ignore them, but get a balance with the collective. Because as someone in a comment reminded me, 
we need to move away from individuation towards collective unity. And that person was, was correct. I'm, when I was talking about being individuated, I was thinking about Carl Jung, because the aim of psychoanalysis is to get to an individuated state where you are, in a sense, a whole holistic being uh, with no um, hang-ups, connections, hanging on to old things, old patterns, people. So to move towards an individuated state where we move beyond that into the, as Jung called it, the collective consciousness. The collective unconscious is where we reside in an unconscious way. We need to make it the collective consciousness so that we're fully aware of our connection with each other. You know, then perhaps we would stop being so horrible to each other, bitchy, nasty, sometimes, critical, judgmental, he said, she said, and perhaps we'd stop killing people. It's as simple as that. Now at this point, the chart above me is going to mysteriously disappear. Whew. Hopefully you had a chance to um, see it. You know, you know, you can always screenshot it because it's there for quite a few minutes. So you can always just go click, click and screenshot it. And then you can expand it and look at it later and see how it perhaps fits with your own chart. But now let's move on to your individual signs. And I have to start with, of course, and this is for Techie Jerry when he puts in the timestamps and Jem is very helpful and often puts in the timestamps. Thank you, Jem. So does uh, Trish the Navigator. Thank you. Thank you to anyone who wants to put in the timestamps. It helps Techie Jerry. He's got quite a lot on his plate at the moment, let alone my channel. In fact, all of us, and I'm sure there's an awful lot of you out there, have got an awful lot going on, which is really super challenging. And it is because we are going through this pretty tough turbulence in space as all the planets align themselves to get into their correct positions for 2024. Now, let's move on to Aries. Aries, this is of course in your ninth house. And what's good about this is that it's a new moon. And this is the part of the chart for you, which is about education and learning. And I think you have been working very hard at learning something, learning something which has been very important to you. And I think that also, and I know I'm, it's interesting, I'm listening to myself and I'm, think, I'm thinking, I'm feeling, I keep using the word think and I'm thinking, mm, do I mean the word think or do I actually mean the word feel. Are you, Aries, spending too much time in your thinking and not enough time in your gut and in your feeling? And I wonder if this is causing you some of that Neptune square, illusion, confusion, delusion, the longing, the just kind of absolutely just awfulness of wishing for something to come true about something. 
whatever that might be. Oh, Aries, is it really good for you what you're trying to wish into your life? Maybe the reason it's not there already is because there is something far more important that is in the wings trying to come in. Think about that, Aries, because I think that's super important. Now let's move on to Taurus. Well, Taurus, how are you doing? Sort of grazing in your field, chomping around, chewing the cud. You thinking or are you feeling? Maybe you're another one who needs to get more into your feelings and out of your thinking. Taurus, it's in your eighth house. You need to let go of something to let something in because this is the eighth house of endings and beginnings. You've also got to sort out your financial situation. Taurus, you're usually very good with anything to do with the economy and your economy and your financial situation. I think the something you are kind of shying away from and thinking, oh gosh, I can't deal with that at the moment. You notice I'm trying to be terribly respectful of all the words I use. I'm trying to be completely politically correct with YouTube. Um, <laughs> hang on a minute. I think that was, oops, that was choking in my throat. It's very difficult to be politically correct all the time. Taurus, your financial situation. There are things you've got to do to get it in order. Stop being such a wuss about it. Get on and sort it out. It feels as if there is or there are some decisions that you have to make and you're being hesitant. You've got to take control and be in command. Stop standing at the back of the field, chomping around and getting your hooves all muddy and dirty in that sludge at the back of the field. Start walking proudly into the centre of the field and taking control of your joint or financial situation or anything you've got invested, anything you're worried about with your piggy bank, sort it with the energy of this new moon before we get to the full moon, which is just after Christmas. And I forget the date and I'm just going to quickly check when the full moon is and bear with me and it's on the 27th and it's in cancer so just be mindful of that so please Taurus get your finances in order it's time now we move on to Gemini Gemini, you chatterboxes, you overthinkers, you wonderful creative teachers. You have such qualities in your mind, but sometimes you too need to step out of your own way and allow your intuition to come through. Gemini, it's in your seventh house of significant relationships. And if there is one part of your chart that you really, really don't need to be caught in too much thinking, it's your significant close relationships. Feel, Gemini. Communicate through feeling. Communicate through touch. Communicate through giving. Don't be so woolly and confusing about what you feel. Tell the other person. You know, new moons can bring in new relationships 
or allow new relate or now allow ongoing relationships to move up a notch. That can all unfold for you, Gemini. Now let's move on to Cancer. Cancer. Well, it's your sixth house. So the sixth house. It's your daily routine. It feels as if you do actually need to take a little bit of action. You do need to use this new moon to take a few little steps forward in your cancer way where you sidestep things and avoid things and keep walking this way, that way as you scuttle towards the oceans, the oceans of your emotions. It's a new moon, Cancer. Mars is here. I think there's something you're feeling very passionate about. There could be something you're concerned about to do with health. If there is, for goodness sake, Cancer, go to the doctor or the homeopathist or the spiritual healer or whatever it is or whoever it is you need to go to that helps get you back on track. But remember, if it's a serious medical issue, then traditional ways are the best. Okay. Um, now, cancer also, this is about how you feel psychologically. And I think your brain is working overtime and you need to breathe. You need to breathe, you need to meditate. I think you've been through a little bit of a tough time, but you know you're strong, Cancer. You're cardinal, you're a water sign. You can become you know, a speedboat. It's not like Pisces where they're floating around underneath the ocean all the time, getting all caught up in all sorts of bits of seaweed and detoured and in, in, in rocky coves and caves. Cancer, you have ambition and a lot of creative thoughts. It's time for you to just be mindful of them. As I said at the beginning, this is not a time for great action, but you can certainly put in some, some work towards what you would like to do during next year. Now let's move on to Leo, my lovely lions in the fifth house. This is your house of fun, Leo. You know, you've been working hard too, Leo, and I think the fifth house for you to have this new moon is really rather super. You might just have a little bit of fun and relaxation with a little bit of mild, gentle flirtation. In or out of a relationship, you know, flirtation is just sometimes what the spirit needs. Also, of course, this is about your creativity. You've got a lot of creative ideas going around in this part of your mind. Remember what I was saying at the beginning about Mercury's retrograde phase from the day after the new moon. It really is time to slow down. It really is time to just take it easy and look at how you can... You need to be better, Leo, at time management. You are a fixed sign, so fix in some Leo cat alone time. It will actually mean that your creative ideas and projects will stand much more chance of launching and becoming something more concrete if you give yourself some time out. So let's move on. Who have we got next? We've got Leo. 
we have Virgo. So Virgo, it's in your fourth house, your fourth house of home and family. It's a new moon. It's Christmas. Are you going to be busy or what? Well, you are, but there's a bit of confusion about who's coming, who's not coming, what's happening. Is the old auntie coming or are all the aunties coming? Is it just a few cousins? Is nobody coming? Is it just the two of you or the one of you? Oh, Virgo, don't overthink it. Slow down, slow down. Do the preparations slowly. Just relax. It's one day for goodness sake. It's one day. And the most important thing, Virgo, is that you clear some space and time in your home for you. Because there is a bit of confusion around. And I think this is where we need to bring in that Chiron energy. It's like who pays attention to you? Who listens to you, Virgo, to your problems? You're such a caring, wonderful person. You know, Virgo is the sign of the carer. Virgo, maybe it's time to open up to someone. I'm sure you have a friend or friends or a family member who'd be only too pleased to sit down and listen. So why not give it a go? Let's move on to Scorpio, second house. So Scorpio, Scorpio, it's in your second house of finance. You have big plans with your piggy bank, with your financial situation. Let me remind you there's a Mercury retrograde starting the day after this new moon. So I wouldn't go making any big plans or laying out any big expenses at this point. Wait until we get January well into the middle part of January. Remember, Mercury goes direct on the 2nd of January in the sign of Sagittarius. So please, Scorpio, take a little bit of time and remember that um, you need to just focus on what is going to be helpful for you with your financial situation. Find somebody trusted to really look at how you can manage some of these tricky things you're trying to set up. Because I think some of you may be taking on too much and may be trying to run before you can walk. So Scorpio, just take a step back. Right, let's move on to Sagittarius. Well, of course, you are the star of the show because it's in your first house. So how does this play out in your first house? Because it's a new moon but there's Neptune squaring it. And I feel, Sagittarius, you're being torn in half. The longing, the yearning for peace and quiet within your own home is massive. The longing and yearning that others have got to be with you is massive. And you would just like to be on your own for a bit. I think this is, is, is quite tough for you, but this is a new moon. And I think what it, it requires, Sagittarius, is for you to make it clear to people that you too 
needs some time out for healing, to heal your wounds, to heal your soul. I think, you know, there isn't a single zodiac sign that has not been through the mill this year. It's been pretty tough. And Sagittarius, it feels like, you know, with Mars in your sign, and you know, you, you're, you're, you're really trying to, to drag the barrel, drag the bottom of the barrel to find the energy. Chiron is trying to help you. Chiron is saying, just put down boundaries, explain you need to be alone sometimes, explain you want space, explain you want you time, and invite the healing in and say, you need to heal. You have an inner wound, Sagittarius, that doesn't heal easily. None of our inner wounds heal easily. We all have them. So step up, explain to the people around you how much you need a bit of space at the moment. Okay, let's move on to Capricorn. Because this is in your 12th house, of course, which is all about, more about the inner you. It can be where you feel a little bit restricted, Capricorn. It's your 12th house. It's it's the house that... that um, you know, actually, this new moon, I think, is good for you. I actually feel that this new moon is going to help you just break out a bit. So that even though we've got that Neptune square, I think it's making you see more keenly, more, you're more focused. As a square, you're seeing it as, I've got to be clear. I've got to be super focused about what I need to do and where I want to go and how you want the next few months to kind of unfold for you, Capricorn. You, you naturally have boundaries. And of course, this Mercury retrograde that starts on the um, day after this new moon is retrograde in your sign and then it will move back into your 12th house, Sagittarius. So think about slowing down a bit anyway because I think this holiday season is giving you a chance to let you know to take your foot off the accelerator i think it's been full on and i think you just haven't had a chance to breathe be firm with people a little bit like i was saying to sagittarius if you were listening to that reading be firm be clear make it clear you have to have you time time out for you so that you can do some of the wonderful healing that is being offered by Chiron, trining this new moon in your 12th house. Now let's move on to Aquarius. Aquarius, it's your 11th house. So this is a house you're at home in because if we follow around on the zodiac, Aquarius is the 11th house, but it's Sagittarius in your new moon reading. It all gets a bit, it's, it's, like, it's like peeling a cucumber. It, it gets just as confusing for me now as an astrologer as it did when I first started. And this is why I think it's so difficult to learn astrology at the beginning, because it's almost as if one's got to think in about 
four or five dimensions at the same time and see it like a Rubik's Cube and everything kind of links into everything else and everything is on top of it at the same time as you can see through it. And so it, it, it's, it's, it's tricky. But listen, Aquarius, it's your 11th house of hopes and wishes and dreams. Don't run away with yourself and think that you can just manifest your dreams. That, oh, it's a new moon in my sign. It's a new moon in Sagittarius. This is wonderful. Oh, gosh, I can just, you know, go, I wish, I wish, I wish, and it'll all come true. No, because you've got to be mindful of that Neptune square. Remember, it's holding you back. It's asking you to be a little bit patient with what you want to manifest because, Aquarius, you have got to do some hard personal work first. You have got to work on yourself on an inner level. I know that sounds like 12th house stuff, but I'm giving it to you, Aquarius. Because Chiron's healing, for it to come in, you need it to be very much in that right frequency. You need to heal first, Aquarius, before you start rushing around, bringing in new things. It's a bit like when we um, do, um, you know, we, 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 we buy something to make ourselves feel better because we live in this consumer world, which is so, so unhealthy for us. It reminds, rem it reminds me of a badge I used to see or a fridge magnet that said, shopping is cheaper than therapy. Um, Depends what you're buying, doesn't it? And depends on the, what the value is and which, which is most important, you or the item of thing, whatever it is. But, you know, I'm going to say more of that another time. But Aquarius, take it easy with this one. Put yourself first, but give yourself, um, give yourself a breather because you're fixed. This is mutable. Use some of this mutable energy to just be a little bit more flexible. Listen to what family want, listen to what friends want. Go a bit more with the flow, Aquarius. Get out of your body and into that higher frequency of your higher consciousness that can really connect with the divine. And now finally, we come on to my oceans of emotions. Pisces. <gasps> Pisces. Oh gosh, Pisces. What a year you've had. What a year you're still having. Oh, bless you, my lovely little goldfish. Whether you're goldfish or massive blue-white whales. Blue-white whales? White, well, whatever they are. Anyway, but anyway, they're probably endangered. So we need to save them. We need to save the planet. And Pisces, this is what you're trying to do all the time, is save the planet. You know, Pisces, your ruling planet Neptune is squaring this new moon in your 10th house of work, career, passion. If you're retired, it's whatever rocks your boat. You know, this Neptune really is saying, you just, just gotta, it, you, you've got to flip it and see it as Saturn. Saturn in Pisces saying, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. You are getting carried away Pisces with all oh, and we could do this and it could be like this and then we do that and then we do this Pisces cool it there are plenty of opportunities to manifest a dream and to make your particular dreams come true 
the energies of this particular new moon are, I don't think, as supportive as they could be for you to do this. I think they're asking you to go within, they. Well, when I talk about they, I'm talking about they, them, that lot that come and tell me stuff. And um, message from my psychiatrist, I am still taking the meds. <clears throat> anyway, moving swiftly on. So, listen, Pisces. Um, Pisces, Mercury goes retrograde the day after this new moon. Pretend like it's going retrograde now, because in a sense, we're already in the shadow. And slow down. You know, you need to really take the rest of December off. Oh, but I need, and I, and I need to do this, and I need to do, and I, you know, Pisces, you're going to end up in an early grave. I don't know how many of you know the works of William Shakespeare, but it's a little bit like Mercutio, who was in Romeo and Juliet, which is about the star-crossed lovers who, of course, sadly die. But Mercutio was Romeo's best friend, and he was a comedian. And when he accidentally, in a fight, does get stabbed, and the stabbing is so bad it's going to make him die, and use all of this as a metaphor, Pisces, he laughs and jokes about it and goes, ha, ha, ha. tomorrow you will find me a grave man. A grave, of course, meaning he will be in the grave. And grave also meaning serious. So Shakespeare had a wonderful take on these kind of energies and metaphors. I wonder if Shakespeare too looked at astrology because remember, it has been around for about 2,000 years. Just saying. But Pisces, don't put yourself in an early grave. If the metaphorical doctor or real doctor is saying rest, then rest. I know Saturn is in your sign trying to give you a backbone. But you got to give Saturn a bit of help. And Saturn is also trying to give you boundaries. And this Chiron trining this new moon in your 10th house of career, passion, hobbies, soul path, soul direction, is really saying, heal thyself, was written over the entrance to the oracle at Delphi. Please, Pisces, slow down and allow yourself to heal. Everything can wait. Please remember, the divine knows best. And actually the divine, she has your back. You've forgotten that there's a whole team of wonderful light beings that have all of our backs in various ways. Every single person, baby, every single person on this planet has, some people like to call it a team of angels looking after them. Whatever words you want to describe these non-physical entities, they are there being very patient with you. And at the moment, Pisces, they are being super patient with you. Pisces, I've gone on a long time for you with this, this reading, and I'm going to stop it there because um, I don't want this to be longer than an hour. So thank you so much, all of you, for being with me for this new moon in Sagittarius. I will do a live on the 12th because then at least... I can also talk about the Mercury retrograde on the 13th. I will also be doing my live forecast for the week ahead on Sunday evening. 
at um, 6.30 my time, adjust for your time zone. Remember, I'm Central European time. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you to all the new subscribers. Bless you. I really appreciate and value your presence here. And thank you to all the people that have been inquiring and asking for sessions with me. Um, if I haven't got back to you, I will. I have a bit of a backlog. I'm working through it. I'm getting there. And I'm afraid we're now looking at February as when you will likely get uh, a session with me. Um, sometimes I get cancellations and I found one for a lovely lady today. I found one for her next week. So it's always worth asking, especially if it is an emergency. I will do my best to accommodate. Please remember to go to my website and subscribe for the newsletter. Remember, we still have the downloadable, um, purchasable uh, guide to how to read your natal chart. And we also have Andrea's beautiful moon calendar uh, that you can download and it, I'm afraid it, you have to buy it. And we're going to make lots of changes to the brand, to the, not lots of changes. We're going to upgrade the brand, um, but we haven't got round to it yet because life gets in the way, doesn't it? And it's a message to all of us and it's a message to me and my particular team being Andrea and Techie Jerry and also some very valuable friends who have my back and they all know who they are and some of you are people I've met for sessions and some of you are people who are subscribers so bless you all and I will see you very soon bye for now